El Paso police have arrested a man who broke into a home saying he was possessed by the devil. A woman appears to become possessed while shopping in a supermarket. I'm going to ask you some questions. I'm not Edward. I'm a demon. I want to talk to the real Edward. It makes me do bad things. I can't stop him. My name is Thomas Matthew Crooks. I hate Republicans. I hate Trump. And guess what? You got the wrong guy. Well, welcome to the program. What exactly are we witnessing out there? We're going to find out today. I'm Ken Michael. Joining me is Pastor Josh Schwartz. And we have a very unique, and I would say uh, no other person on the planet is doing what our guest is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, Carl Teichrib, if you haven't seen his ministry or heard him, he's been on Jan Markell a number of times, and he has a very unique ministry. Carl, welcome to the program. It's good to be with you guys. Looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, so are we. So for those that haven't heard of your ministry, just give us a brief overview of what you do and, and explain what your ministry is about. Absolutely. It really is an issue of looking at worldviews, and that includes the political, the philo philosophical and religious component, the spiritual component, what's happening even in the world of technology. Uh, I've been engaged as a Christian researcher full-time since 1997, in fact, from 97 to 2001, I was Gary Cause, director of research, helping him to write his book, The New World Religion, before, right before the millennial changeover. And so the work I engage in is my, primarily research-based, trying to understand the cultural, spiritual, and political shifts that are happening in these very interesting days. Wow. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that because I would say, I know, Pastor Josh would agree, and I know you would also, that what we're witnessing right now is a complete spiritual attack. And we, our ministry has been focusing on this now for quite a while. But when you look at the events that are happening out there right now, especially with recent events, the attempted assassination of, of former President Trump and everything that's going on in the world right now, uh, I know we're all focused not just on the geopolitical aspect of what's going on, but the spiritual attack that's not only happening in this country, but globally. Yeah, and I think we need to set the stage with what the scriptures say. And a, a very important scripture to, to set the stage with is it comes out of 1 John chapter 4. 1 John chapter 4, verses um, 2 and 3 say this, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And then he's, he shifts it here by saying this, and every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you already heard was coming and now is in the world already. So we've got the say, stage set and there are Antichrist spirits. Um, we know that there will be ultimately the Antichrist who comes, the man with the plan, as Jan says, Mr. Fix-It, as Jan says. But in the meantime, there are going to be Antichrist spirits who are really just moving us towards this Antichrist system. Carl, what are your thoughts with whatever's going on in the world today? How is it just preparing us for this whole system? Well, what we're seeing is a worldview shift that is absolutely monumental. It is a civilization shift. It is a move away from that Judeo-Christian ethic that has bound the Western world together for generations. And in the last 50 years, especially the last 50 years, you have seen a, a move away from that. And now it is accelerating at a pace that we hadn't, haven't really seen before. Technology is part of that. We now have access to tools that all of a sudden can bring new ideas and different ideas and pagan ideas into our right into our homes. Uh, at one time, it was, you know, we would have to turn on the television and uh, we would pick and choose our TV shows. But now it's it, it's ubiquitous. We have it just, you know, literally at our fingertips wherever we go, uh, whether it's in our car or whether it's in school, or whether it's in your living room or sitting somewhere in a grassy park. So we have this incredible access to knowledge and information. But within that knowledge and information, we also have this this desire now to find something else, to find more than just simply what our parents or grandparents believed in. And again, this is a 50-year shift that we have been experiencing. Uh, again, that move away from the Judeo-Christian worldview into what we would call a pagan 
or a re-enchanted world. If you look at what's happening right now, if you if we've uh, re- we're rebelling against God right now, absolutely. So there's less and less people that have the spirit of Christ in them. So it only makes sense that there are more people out there that have this spirit of Antichrist in them, and we're going to see a rise in demonic uh, activity. I think we're seeing that all over the world. Um, so right. when right. we get we're into these conversations, in Romans one. We're living in a Romans 1 culture. Yeah, absolutely. We worship and serve creation rather than the creator. This is going to be the shift. Absolutely. Hmm. So most people look at the worldview now, especially after the assassination attempt, they're solely focused on the geopolitical aspect. And I think that's the, the wrong way to look at this. In fact, I would say that God gives a nation the leaders it deserves. If you look at past history at what's going on at that time in that nation, uh, God always gives a nation the leaders it deserves. And the blessings and curses of that nation are dependent on the spiritual health of that nation. And that's, I believe, what we're seeing not only in this country, but around the world. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it's important to to note that we cannot be taking this from a political worldview. We've got to be seeing this in a spiritual worldview. Carl, before we started recording, you were talking about how in 2018 you were at a conference and and there were some deep, demonic, dark things that were happening in the political realm. Can you explain what was going on there? Well, well, sure. Uh, And it's interesting because there is this pushback uh, from well, there's a pushback from, from the world system against those who would uphold a, a Judeo-Christian uh, value system, a belief in Jesus Christ primarily as being the only way. That's that's an issue. So when I attend events, and again, as a researcher, that's my job, to go to these events. So when I attended the 2018 Parliament of World Religions, for an example, uh, one of the keynote speakers was Jim Wallace from Sojourners, and this is during the U.S. midterm elections, and he was describing the U.S. political system and the election options as being a battle between demons and angels, and that if you were Republican and an evangelical, well, you had now sold yourself out for power, and you were on the side of the demons, and if you were on the other side, on the Democrat side, you were on the side of the angels, and that was really interesting uh, as he brought this together in a, a quite a a, a, a way of, of kind of, you know, it, it, was a, it, was, it was a point of conflict, a point of tension. Then, during the course of that week at the Parliament, we had a Baptist minister, and she was building a Buddhist San Mandela, using a San Mandela uh, art form to create an image of Kali, the Hindu deity of destruction and death, holding the severed head of Supreme Court Justice Kavanaugh, and having the belts of all of those who confirmed Kavanaugh around her belt at the end of the event. And I've got, the, we've got the, the pictures, we've got the videos, uh, because I was right there watching it. At the end of this, then she, along with other religious leaders, gathered around and did a dance invocation to Kali, asking Kali to come forth and bring justice upon the Republicans and justice upon Kavanaugh and justice upon Trump. And it was, well... It was pretty raw. It was pretty wild. And realizing, of course, the 2018 Parliament, the theme was, and I've got the the workbook in front of me, or the agenda book, the theme was the power of promise of inclusion, the power of love. And you realize that there's not a lot of love there. Not at all. And then last year's Parliament, and again, I've got the workbook or the agenda book, last year's Parliament was entitled Defending Freedom and Human Rights, a Call to Conscience. But over and over and over again, the religious leaders who were in at, at the event uh, for the main were saying, look, if you are an evangelical, if you are a conservative, you are on the side of authoritarianism. And Donald Trump is the Antichrist or the next closest thing to the Antichrist. Mm-hmm. And that this is yeah. a spiritual battle. Wow. And the battle is to bring down uh, those, mm-hmm. those um, anti-democratic authoritarians. And they're speaking about us. They're yeah. right, speaking about right. The, well, the Christian conservative community. They're calling good evil and evil good. I mean, that's that's very clear. Yeah. And so you actually, you go from the frying pan right into the fire. You attend these uh, events and where they're not only worshiping demons, but they're actually, uh, I, I know one of the largest ones is right here in the Twin Cities. In fact, it's it's just a few miles from our office here. 
Uh, explain a, just real quick, you know, what happens at these? What do they talk about? What are the what happens in these breakout sessions that you go to? Sure. Well, I, I attend a number of different kinds of events. I have to because as a researcher, you need to have a, your, your finger on the pulse of of culture in a variety of ways. And you're right, Ken. Just down the road from you guys is Paganicon, which is the Twin Cities' largest pagan convention. It's actually the largest indoor pagan convention in the U.S. Midwest. And roughly a thousand witches and druids and Wiccans come together. And I've gone to the breakout sessions. I go, I've been there now three times. And um, okay, so an interesting, one of the interesting things in 2017 was I went to a workshop on the ethical uses of curses, including speakers who were engaged in, uh, at that point in time, uh, the the witch and the witchcraft community had been involved in trying to conjure up curses against President Trump. Uh, and uh, <laughs> it was interesting because they recognized that it probably had backfired on them, at least from the point of view of uh, public relations. Now it looked to the you know it looked to the to the to the community. It looked to uh, to the nation that now the the Wiccans and the witches were vindictive, and uh, were were extremely hostile and 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 had a dark intent. And it was really interesting hearing it from themselves. Going, man, you know, well we kind of screwed up on that in a way because it it backfired from a PR point of view. Well, this year I attended a workshop on how to engage at the political level as Wiccans and witches and specifically how to engage at the local level, making sure that as witches, you involve yourself on school boards, you involve yourself on you know, on planning committees, uh, engage in community fundraisers, make sure that you get yourself out there, um, contribute financially to your, to your uh, political um, uh, elected officials, that way you actually have a voice when all of a sudden you ring them up, they'll remember who you are because hey, you're the one of the few who actually contributed, right. uh, uh, you know, a, a certain sum of money towards their campaign. So in essence, so, these yeah, it becomes very practical. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. They're doing the things that the that your church should be doing. The people in the pews should be engaging the community, but they're doing the exact thing that we should be doing. And in essence, what we're seeing is this shift towards uh, a demonic worldview, the doctrines of demons being taught and absolutely normal. I mean, we see in public libraries, um, we see um, LGBTQ plus flags, we see uh, drag out, drag uh, story hour in all these places, and it's all this movement towards um, inclusivism that's driven by demonic forces. Yeah, I mean, they've infiltrated every aspect of our government, every aspect of our education system, every aspect of our medical system. I mean, you go right down the line, people, I don't think the average person realizes how infested our system is. And we talk about the B system being set up. Yeah. Well, it is set up right now, and it is moving full speed ahead. And I don't think the average person realizes that. Right. And, uh, you know, where I, am, I find the, the aspect of this particularly disturbing is that, okay, I, I can go to, a, and I know this is something that some Christians will find maybe troubling, I can go to pagan events, I get what they're doing, I understand the worldview, uh, in fact, I'm not expecting anything less or anything different, but then I walk into churches, and I'm seeing the paganization of the Christian culture, so, I'm, I mean, I know you guys didn't plan to go down this road, but I'll give you just one example. Um, here is from, published by the Mennonite Central Community, a document entitled Earth Trek. And in the middle of the Earth Trek book, and it's a, a week-long series of programs and action points that you can engage in in your churches, in the middle of it is a meditation. I'll just give you an example. And you tell me if this is pagan or not. We are the Earth. This is a meditation right from their own document. We are the Earth through the plants and animals that nourish us. We are the rains and the oceans that flow through our veins. We are the breath of the forest and of the land and the plants of the sea. We are human animals related to all other life as descendants of the firstborn cell, and on and on it goes. And then towards the very back, and, and it's in bold, so you get it, one of the action points right there. This week, make an offering to the earth in the form of a prayer or some other gift. I'm wow. sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, and that's, I'm just using that as an example. Right. It's endemic. It's everywhere. I'm seeing all kinds of examples of this uh, from from every kind of denomination imaginable, and I'm going, all right, we have, 
in, right within the church. Yeah, you know, and I think that's interesting pagan. because what we're seeing is this, um, it's almost like people in the church are getting jaded with uh, traditional Christian spirituality, and they want to move towards more of this uh, emotionalism, this whole experientialism. And I think that's why we're seeing a lot of, say, younger people, millennials and younger, moving towards New Age spirituality, walking out of the doors of churches because they want that experience. And this is what uh, paganism is giving them, is they experience. That's why they're wearing crystals, because they feel different. They feel like something is changing, like they can relate to the earth. And this is, so it's not only a, a, a a shift from politics to spirituality, but church to spirituality, and all this evil is really just growing in our culture, and it's taking the Christendom by storm, and we we haven't done anything about it. And I know when you talk with Jan, Carl, it's it's been a slow fade over the last hundred years, but now we're just seeing this exponential growth of new age spirituality all over the place, and Satan and his demons are having a heyday just taking over all the Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, that's exactly right. what we're seeing. And the other component of this that bothers myself, and I'm sure many others as well, is the, the fear then that has come within the Christian community, uh, where, where all of a sudden, I'm having to ask questions uh, of, of, of friends, and in, I mean, my goodness, my wife and I were, were in a, a service not that long ago singing a song, uh, it's a wonderful song about standing firm on, on the cross, standing firm in Christ. And I looked at her and I go, do we really believe that? Do we really believe that? Do we really believe that every knee will bow, we bow in love, and the rest of, literally the rest of creation will bow in judgment? Do we really believe that? Do we really believe that Jesus Christ rose from the dead? Because if we did really believe that, why are we so afraid of the, of the people around us? Why are we so afraid of the cultural change that's taking place? Yes, it should cause us concern. Absolutely, 110% should cause us concern. But I think in many respects, we have always handcuffed ourselves with the fear of other people. I, I, you know, and again, Ken, this is one of those things where it's, and you, know, you and I had a conversation, I think it was uh, back uh, when I went to Paganicon, we had, we had lunch together, and I think this is one of the things that I was telling you as well, was that, um, you know, these are just people. And this is one of those takeaways. When you attend these events, you strip it all away and you realize these are just people. And they need Christ. Exactly. And they have, been, they have had their eyes clouded. And we have, we have failed as being ambassadors for exactly. Jesus Christ. So what should we do? I mean, as we close here, what should the church do? I mean, what can we as Christians do? Yeah. Like I said, I don't think the average person even realizes the extent of the of what's happening out there. What what should we do as a church family? Oh, there's a number of things. First, we we have to look inside it and, and recognize that all right. Part of the problem, part of this shift, is because the church itself has lost its first love. Mm. We we're building our kingdoms. We are chasing programs we and i understand the importance of programs don't get me wrong but we end up chasing a lot of things outside of actually pursuing the great commission um you know when jesus says to go into all the world i don't see a caveat in that i don't see him saying well don't go here don't go there no we're supposed to go into all the world we're supposed to be able to to bring the gospel forward to all people and i think in some respects um we have we have frightened ourselves out of the great commission and it's time, I, I believe, as a church, we need to get back to that action, back Absolutely. to being active towards Absolutely. that. And, and Paul's model in Acts 17 is the prime model for how to engage in a pagan culture. Read Acts 17 again. It is literally the model put forward to us. Yeah. I mean, Athens is generationally steeped in a raw, raw form of paganism. Uh, completely enmeshed in it. And Paul goes into the city, he surveys the city, he he finds a leverage point in the monument to the unknown God, and then he faces literally a court, and he has to now give a, a, a justification or a telling of this new thing. And he brings to them the fact that God is not the same as nature, that he is the maker, he is the Lord of heaven and earth. And he brings them all the way to the resurrection and even quotes their own philosophers. But he has walked in their midst. Yep. He, he actually has the ability to say something. 
And and I think we've cloistered ourselves so much that we're afraid even just to walk outside. And I told, so hello. So what you're saying yeah. is we have to be culturally uh, read up. We have to know as followers of Jesus what's going on around us, so that we can engage the lost in a way that is compelling. Because that's exactly what Paul did, right? In Acts right. chapter 17, he was compelling enough to worship the unknown God in Athens to bring the gospel to the Athenian people because the truth of the matter is this. The gospel is the only thing that transforms human hearts, that fills the void that every single one of us fills. So we have to be engaged with the culture and we have to be uh, academically aware of what's going on in the culture so that we can engage the people around us Absolutely. in a way that brings hope to lost souls. Well, Carl, we uh, so appreciate your ministry. And like I said, it's the most unique ministry I've ever seen. And if you haven't had a chance to check out Carl, please do. He has a book out called Game of Gods. Carl, how can people get in touch with you? Oh, absolutely. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and on Twitter. You can go to gameofgods.ca. That's my book's webpage. You can read excerpts from it. Uh, from well, we're ending roughly 2015. I was uh, editor and producer of an online monthly magazine called Forcing Change. And you can go back and read the nine years of back issues at forcingchange.org. You can get a hold of me through that venue as well. Uh, and if you're interested in the book Game of Gods, it's a 500 plus page massive survey uh, regarding this cultural, spiritual, political shift. Listen, if our religious perspective persuasion, if our religious worldview and understanding is wrong, it will affect every other level of, of cultural engagement because religion, broadly speaking, informs philosophy. Philosophy, bro <clears throat> pardon me, broadly speaking, informs culture. Culture, broadly speaking, informs politics. And if it's wrong at the top, it will be wrong at the bottom. Yeah, and politics correct. ends up becoming a yes. faith in itself. And that's where we're at right now. Uh, a, a, literally a shift, a, a seismic shift and how we view every aspect of our lives through a, a spiritual lens. Yeah. Well, we look forward to continuing this conversation, and with everything going on right now, especially spiritually, uh, we are, uh, we're just going to see this demonic activity increase. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Carl, I want to thank you for being on the program today, and God bless you. Thank you so much. That's just fascinating stuff. I mean... When you look at what's happening in the country, he's, he has his finger on the pulse of what's going on. Yeah, and it's all spiritual. It is. Now, we want to put it in the guise of political or religious, but it's, it's all spiritually driven. And by spiritual, I mean demonic, yeah. dark spiritual things happening. And, you know, friends, as, as, as I've got to know Carl and I've spent time with him and had conversations with him, he is a wealth of knowledge, but he absolutely loves Jesus. He has an absolute heart and desire for the gospel. Uh, that's why he goes to Burning Man. That's why he uh, spends three weeks in the desert every year as the Lord allows him to, so that he can meet the people where they are, where they're hurting the most. Um, he's described Burning Man as a 10-day funeral uh, for life, a time of mourning. And why do we mourn? Well, because we're emotional human people. We feel things. That's how God created us. That's how we image God partially. But the truth is this, the only way that we're going to be able to be uh, filled is with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And friends, the gospel is as simple as God created us to have a relationship with us. But Adam and Eve uh, were deceived by the evil one. They disobeyed God's law. They brought sin into the world. And therefore, because of sin, there had to be uh, a separation between God and man, between righteousness, God, and unrighteousness, humanity. And so there's a chasm between sinful humans and holy God. But God still desires a deep relationship with us. So he sent his son, Jesus, to live a perfect life and to die a perfect death, an atoning death in your place and in my place. He paid your penalty on the cross so that you could have eternal life with that holy God. And all the Bible tells us we have to do is repent turn from our wicked ways, recognizing we're sinful, and turn towards Christ. Believe in his completed work. Place our faith, our trust, our hope in Jesus' work alone, not our own. And then 
we will receive eternal life. So the question is this, how will you respond? What will you do with Jesus? And Christians, followers of Jesus who are listening to me, what are you going to do about what Carl had to say? Are you going to engage the people around you? Because after all, God has sovereignly placed you where he's placed you for you to be his ambassador, his salt, and his light there. It is our call, Ken, to proclaim the gospel to everyone we've come into contact with. We must be faithful with that. The days are waning. Evil seems to be prevailing, which shows me that we've got to be in the last moments of the last days. So we must be spreading the gospel, sharing Jesus with others. Why? Because souls, eternal souls are at stake. Absolutely. I mean, you look at, he's going out and witnessing to not just pagans, witches, warlocks. I mean, people that are in this demonic Deeply. realm. Yeah. And if he can do that with them, there's no reason why the church can't witness to their friends, their family, yeah. and, and people that we come in contact with every day. So, yeah. I mean, we have a great commission, and, and unfortunately, the church isn't carrying that commission out. Well, talking about that, Ken, you're going some places in the upcoming weeks. What do you got coming up? So Labor Day weekend, if you're not doing anything and you're in the Sheraton, Iowa area, uh, Pastor Dennis St. Laura's has a wonderful group down there of remnant believers. I was there a couple of years ago. He's actually having a, a four-day uh, church camp, and myself and Dr. J.B. Hickson are going to be speaking there. Uh, I'll be there Saturday and Sunday. That's Grace Baptist Church in Sheraton, Iowa. So if you're in that area and you have a chance to come out, uh, sign up. I believe you have to sign up for it, get a hold of them uh, at Grace Baptist, and I'm sure they can accommodate you. And then, Josh, we have another fantastic event coming up. We had such a success with the last Pastor Huddle. Yeah, we've got the Pastor's Huddle 4.0 coming up in October this fall, uh, October 8, 9, and 10, again, in conjunction uh, with the Understanding the Times event. It's going to be a great time. Um, spots are already starting to fill up. Uh, so if you were able to attend the previous huddle and want to come again, please sign up for that. If you've never attended a huddle, please sign up. It's going to be a great time. This is for teaching pastors. It's a time of extra training. And this uh, October, we have Dr. Mike Dodds. He's the dean of the seminary at Calvary University in Kansas City, uh, Missouri. And he's going to be speaking on a uh Theological Evaluation of Replacement Theology. It's going to be a great time, Ken. Ten hours preparing us pastors on how to handle the Word of God in the face of replacement theology. Yeah, and that is such a huge topic. I mean, everywhere I go, people come up to me and go, my, my church is into this. They, yeah. Israel is no longer relevant, and that is the biggest lie that Satan has out there right now. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, Make your holiday plans early this year on December 5th through the 8th. We're going to be with Prophecy Watchers again, and we'll be down in Branson, Missouri for their conference. If you've missed the last two, especially this last one in Colorado Springs, we had a wonderful time. Yeah. People showed up from everywhere. It sells out quick. So go to uh, Prophecy Watchers' website, prophecywatchers.com. Get the information you need to. If you can't be there to join us, uh, you can certainly live stream it and download it afterwards, and that's December 5th through the 8th this uh, Christmas season. I hope you can join us. Well, friends, heavy program, but an important program, a program that tells us all about what we are experiencing in the here and now and the people around us. So equip yourselves, prepare yourselves, and then do something about it. Step out in faith, pray for your neighbors, and then share the gospel with them. Until next time. Keep looking up for our salvation. Draw us near.